This is a follow-up to the Curta calculator project. I went through the assembly of this, it's 3D printed, quite a few parts in this and there were various uh, minor issues along the way that I had to resolve and a few modifications I made um, for my personal preference. But it's now pretty much complete, I've finished testing it, it works perfectly, all the functions work the way they should. I've been asked a couple of questions that I thought I would just quickly answer before I completely finish with this project. Um, the first one was whether I did find anything while I was going through and checking the alignment of the gears and I did find one thing that um, has allowed me to reduce the friction even more so it now turns even more freely than it did and it's, it was a fairly minor thing but if you recall the TENS bell then one of the functions of the TENS bell is when we take the gears that run on the drive shafts there's a locking section of the TENS bell where this is not actually a gear it's a locking section and it kind of runs around this and it stops the gear turning when it shouldn't so it can only turn when it gets to the cutout sections uh, but I found that um, this was pressed too hard up against the TENS bell so there's quite a lot of friction it wasn't too bad when it was being rotated but when it was um, being moved by the carry lever there was quite a lot of friction trying to move this up and down uh, the radius of this curve is not the same as a TENS bell and I think possibly the differences between the 3D printers uh, the one that Marcus was using and mine um, produces different lengths slightly different lengths to these um, points it's only a fraction of a millimetre but it was enough to cause quite a lot of friction not so much in the rotation but in the movement of the carry levers. So I eased these uh, a little bit, a bit of uh, abrasive paper on this and just a few strokes on here, and uh, it eased them all up, and now it turns even more freely than it did. The other question was whether or not the modified um, shaft on the reversing lever worked the way it should, and yes it did. I've made my own version of this, so this is the original, this is the one that was in here last time you saw it, I've since taken it out, and it's now got uh, one of these in, so this is one where the dimples are in a different place. Uh, other than that it's the same um, size, but it's just um, locating the reversing lever into the correct location. In terms of the alignment of the gears, I found that the alignment of the gears, they were all slightly high. Every single one was about half a millimetre high. It was working, but it was not perfectly centred on the gears, uh, on the select levers. So what I did is, rather than adjusting all the shafts, the selector shafts, um, I had the calculator apart anyway to replace the spring I mentioned in the previous video. So I shortened the... Um, supports that run between the top section and the bearing plate. Shorten that by 0 0.6 or, or 3 by 0 0.6 millimeters and that had the effect of raising the step drum by the same amount and that brought all the step drum gears perfectly in line with the um, input select gears. So that uh, worked out well, they're now perfectly aligned so the next question I was asked was whether or not the replacement spring, so this is the one that again was in here last time you saw it, whether that fixed the problem. And if you recall the problem was that the crank would drop down, so when you put it into subtract mode it would drop down slightly when you released it and it was enough to um, allow the gate at the bottom to prevent the crank from turning. So I've made a slightly shorter spring, it pops up nicely but now as you can see it doesn't drop down again when you release it but it doesn't take a lot of force to pop it back down so that worked out well so it was just a very similar profile I have stiffened it slightly as I say this is the one that came out of the calculator I had um, previously made a slightly modified version and you may be able to see that uh, this is the modified one is slightly thicker and slightly stiffer so the one that's in there now is a version of this that is simply four millimeters shorter but I think the shortening the original by four millimeters would work just as well. Another question I was asked was how I fit these numbers onto the digit wheels and so I thought I'd demonstrate that. I was asked to demonstrate it. It's fairly straightforward and it really starts when you uh, tidy up 
the wheels themselves. So when you print them, uh, they obviously are 3D printed, so we'll have a relatively rough uh, outer. So to clear that up, what I did is make a small uh, adapter for the lathe. This then slides on and I can machine the outer surface of this part. It's only a very small amount. You could do it with a, a piece of abrasive paper. But I just find the lathe makes a, a nicer finish. And it also guarantees it's spinning centrally uh, relative to the hole that runs through it. And um, what I did, I machined it down just far enough to clean it up so that all the um, 3D printing marks had disappeared. And what I ended up with was a part that has a diameter of 18.4 millimeters. So if you work out the length of um, the piece of paper that you'd need to wrap around there, which is of course the length of the uh, printed digit paper that you produce, um, I came out to 58 millimeters. So what I did is using the files that Marcus provided, uh, I simply print a load on a piece of ordinary paper and then I use a knife to uh, very carefully cut them out and if they're the correct length then they should wrap exactly around um, the digit wheel. So the size you make them depends on um, the size you end up with with your digit wheels. Just measure it, work it out and then you know what size to make these. Doesn't matter what size you draw them, you can just scale it when you print. So that's what I did. I just uh, drew it so it was a size that seemed to be fairly close to what I needed and then it's worked out what the uh, scaling uh, percentage was required when I came to print it. So the next thing is how you actually fit it to the digit wheel. It does have to be fitted in the correct orientation of course otherwise the numbers that show on the calculator will be incorrect or they'll be offset and you'll get half of two different digits showing which is obviously not ideal. So as I mentioned in an earlier video what I found was that on these particular ones you've got this little hole for the carry pin and the correct location is to have the six digit uh, centrally aligned with that hole. So what you do is just align the six with the hole and then wrap it around, tidy it up while you have it like this so just go around make sure it's uh, central check the alignment of the digits again so hopefully you can see the six is centrally aligned with that hole and then the slightly fiddly but it's not too difficult again making sure it's properly centered if you can see this so I'm working around the camera so I don't know how well this will turn out um, so if it's the wrong length now's the time to correct that before you do go any further and then what I do is just take some uh, super glue this is kind of the thicker version of the super glue but it doesn't really matter this is not what's really going to hold it on this is just to kind of tack it in place it's the actual lacquer um, that holds the paper onto the wheel and then what I do is just run a very thin uh, bead of super glue down the join doesn't need to be accurate at this point it's just putting some super glue there I take a steel ruler then I just roll the two together. So what I'm doing here is rolling this on. I don't know how well you can see this. And just rock it back and forth for a few seconds. And then what you'll end up with is a perfectly aligned digit. And if you press it on fairly hard, you need a fairly hard steel rule, something like that, and it will close up the gap pretty much completely so there's no visible join showing. And again, if you check, you can see the six is perfectly aligned with the hole and so all you do is uh, make sure that you've done it long enough for the glue to go off I haven't sped this video up it just takes 10-15 seconds so what you end up with is a seamless join or almost seamless join and it looks uh, the part as long as the paper is the right length it looks very neat and tidy when you've done it and it's as simple as that the next step is just to lacquer it so let the super glue off go off for an hour and then I used um, an old drive shaft that I'd uh, printed put that into the lathe put some cardboard up with a hole in the centre just so I didn't get lacquer all over the lathe piece of cardboard on the lathe bed um, spin it at about 300 rpm and while it's spinning spray the lacquer on and that's to get it evenly spaced 
and then immediately slow the lathe down to something like 60 rpm and leave it running for 10 minutes for the lacquer to go off speed it back up second coat slow it down leave it running at 60 rpm for maybe 10-15 minutes and uh, the lacquer will go off by having it rotate it doesn't kind of all run down to the bottom and pull um, it, it leaves it nice and evenly coated once it's gone off take this off put the next one on and uh, repeat it I found that what I can do is with the uh, drive shafts because they're quite long I could get four of these on do four at once and I'll just put some um, paper round the paper tube around the gear part don't want any lacquer on this part and uh, it's as simple as that it literally takes three or four minutes to do each one and they come out looking very nice very similar process on the other one that's the input selector gear same sort of thing same technique these will go straight into the lathe or you can do the same thing and sit them on a, a shaft and uh, make sure they're spinning when you lacquer them and they come out very nice okay so that's it um, hopefully that's this project wrapped up one last thing before we finish I mentioned I might be printing some smaller versions of this but the question really is what size to go down to well I was considering what size to print for the next version of this I want to print a smaller one I was thinking about the various components that are in here and the practicalities of printing them some of the parts in here are already at the limit of what um, 3d printing can really achieve with it being strong enough to be functional so if we go smaller than this then certain small parts such as the pin on the bottom of the selector shafts will have to be metal I could do a metal insert doesn't need the entire component doesn't need to be metal but if I try and print a 3d pin that's only three quarters of a millimeter in diameter it will just snap off so the, that's the sort of thing I was thinking about while considering the sizes so we'll just move the camera down and I'll show you what I've been considering so I started looking at some of the more complex components and this is the the main body out of the calculator that I've um, already produced or at least this is a prototype it's exactly the same size uh, you can see this has been um, used for other things I actually use this to help me um, finish off the um, the sanding down of the lower case and this fits in the top and it's uh, just stops me snapping the fingers off that uh, I mentioned in a previous video so this is what we're starting with now this is a, a, a times three um, size this is three times bigger than the original calculator and when you scale things you, it's not always uh, readily apparent quite what effect the scaling may have in terms of how it appears so I then went down to this size and this is actually 66.6% um, the size of this one in other words this is a times two compared to the original it's twice the size of the original I then tried a smaller version and this is 1.5 times the size of the original calculator so you can see the scaling has a massive impact on some of the parts so looking at other parts um, where they become uh, more critical in terms of if we're getting towards single layers within the print then we'd have to go smaller now I printed all these with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and that's what I decided I wanted to use for the next version I probably will do an even smaller version than what I'm going to do next but I will then have to switch to a 0.2 millimeter nozzle but for this one I would like to stick to the 0.4 so looking at the original tens bell this is the one out of the calculator I've already printed and scaling that down to suit the middle one the times two I end up with this and you can see it does make a big difference same with some of the smaller components so this is one of the selector shafts that's what these knobs run on and this is off the this is the size of uh, the ones that are in the calculator I've already done and when I scale this down to this size we end up with this and you can see it does make a huge difference um, but that's the one I've decided to do I'll be going for the times two so it'll end up as twice the size of the original and I'm pretty sure the parts can be made relatively easily and end up with a calculator that is a lot smaller than the original and just to try and um, 
hammer the point home, we'll put two of the outer cases alongside each other and you'll see the difference in the overall size of the calculator. So this is of course the one I've done and I've printed the lower case for the double size version and you can see it does make a huge difference. In fact this one is now small enough to fit into the hand. So that's what I was really aiming for. Now of course it is, as I say, twice as big as the original um, but I still think this will represent quite an interesting challenge to try and get this to print and uh, we'll see how far we get with it and uh, whether we can get it to work as well as the uh, three times size one. So that's where I'm heading with this project. I'm not going to post lots of videos on this. I will um, show this now and again as I uh, progress with it. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to get somewhere and we'll end up with a working calculator, albeit a lot smaller.